Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Wednesday, April 10th, and you have tuned into the Daily Bone podcast. This podcast discusses all things crypto market, including the majors like Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Solana. Don't look at the charts this morning if you have a sensitive stomach. We also talk shop about meme coins, NFTs, and other alternative assets. Today, we have an action-packed show. Clemente warned me about just how much action, so I'm going to push very hard to get through this. Today, we are going to discuss the crypto dump after to this morning's CPI print. We're going to discuss why the Ethereum ETF approval odds are decreasing by the day and what that could do to crypto prices in general. And we are going to discuss all things base as activity on the L2 continues to heat up. I want to give a major, major shout out to today's partner. The show is brought to you in partnership with Pina Games, another gaming partner. We absolutely love it. Easy. What exactly do people need to know about Pina Games? So, Peanut Games, launching on Blast, three playable games right now with Bubble Bots, Battle Dash, and a Rock, Paper, Scissors game. They have their Peanut Farms that are now live, so it's a way to earn points for their upcoming Nuts token. All of this as well, you earn the points from playing games, totally free to play, browser-based, it's only desktop at the moment. Mobile is going to be released within a month. Apps in the App Store will also go through an update. And those three games are all live. Only one at the moment is available on Blast. The rest will be live this month. And those points are used to craft a mystery peanut, which is their way to farm and ultimately earn points that go towards the next iteration of a potential token rollout. It's backed by a bunch of well-known people in the space, ranging from Dingling, Grail.eth, and more. You can also see, uh, if you're watching the YouTube stream, Immutable, Cluster Capital, and Pixelmon or Mon Protocol, are all backing it as well. So some quality names in the space that people are familiar with. They're casual, easy, fast, action-paced games, and it's a way to farm on Blast. So, I mean, we're seeing the Blast mentality right now go absolutely crazy. A ton of people diving into Blast head first. That was one of the, my takeaways from New York was how many people weren't diving into this opportunity, and Peanut Games is one of those newer opportunities for many people to get involved with. We have an AMA with the founder later today as well, so I'm excited to dive in. But a ton of different ways to be early on something on Blast and potentially reap some awesome rewards. Hell yeah. We'll sign up for the game on Blast using the link that is pinned up top on the Twitter space. It's also in the YouTube description. Uh, very easy to find. I'm sure we'll tweet it out. All that. Kicks, how you doing this morning, amigo? Phenomenal, man. Got two plus hours of REM sleep last night. Uh, went deep into the dream world. Solved some things my brain's been looking to solve. And now I'm just applying it to real life, dude. So let's get after it. Wow, seems like your Wednesday is just off to an electric start. Uh, definitely, oh, yeah. Be yeah, love to hear Here's it. My buddy at the coffee shop talked some conspiracy theories, just you know, lined on that stuff. Ooh, which ones? Uh, dead internet theory is like my favorite one right now. I'm a big flat Earth guy. Nice, yeah. Well, I bet uh, the uh, totality solar eclipse really fucked with your head a little bit. There. <laughs> no, it actually just made it even more clear that the chemtrails were uh, the reason behind it. So it all adds up. It all, if anything, it justified my thesis. Because you couldn't see it. it everywhere, so it, it flew right. over a certain flat part of the world. It's not round. Facts, man. I agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> well, quite an eventful morning thus far, Kicks. You had a chance to bump into your friend and talk conspiracy theories. Yeah, Why don't we just kick things off with the weather report whenever you're ready, amigo. Uh, I, unfortunately, did not get as much REM sleep because I had to take my dog out in the middle of the night. Rare thing, once every four or five months. It's okay. I'm ready to cook with you guys. check on that diet. You know what I'm saying? All right, ladies and gentlemen, Wednesday, April 10th, ETH market volume coming in 17.7 million. Solana coming in at 12. Ordinal is absolutely cooking $36.4 million. Over to the NFT market leaders on uh, Ethereum, we got Milady up 7% to 4.8 ETH. And Block Games Dice are down 35% to 0 0.37 ETH. Over on Solana, the Pekinians are up 80% to 8.1 SOL. Nice. And Nadlad's up 6% to 135 soul. Finally, on Ordinals, Blob is up 60% to 0 0.048. And Pizza Ninjas went on a nice little run up 40% to 0 0.115 BTC. I'll tell you what, when you combine Solana, ETH, Bitcoin, all those numbers, they don't even make sense anymore, right? We need one number to combine them all, maybe USDC. Crypto Roundup, majors all down. After two straight days of ETF outflows and a hot CPI print this morning, the boomers exiting the markets. Bitcoin down <laughs> 67.8K, ETH at 3430, and Solana all the way down to 165. You're definitely not looking at a guy that bought some more at 200. Standout tokens for today, meme coin stand 
up 75% to a $45 million market cap. Machi's Bopa Opa up 31% to a $38 million market cap. Whip down 14% to a $3.4 billion market cap. Monad Labs announced the completion of a $225 million funding what? round led by Paradigm to build their hyperscalable EVM compatible layer one with throughput goals of 10K transactions per second. The chain aims to directly compete with ETH and existing L2s. Over on to Yuga Labs, Board Ape Yacht Clubs announced Lisbon, Portugal as the location of 2024's Ape Fest this October. Since Ape Fest 2024 is in Hong Kong, since that happened, Board Apes have bled 30% down to their current 12.2 ETH floor, prompting crypto Twitter to poke fun and ask if the event will be held in Portugal or Lisbon, Ohio. I saw Easy Eats making that joke. Lastly, NBA Top Shot kicked off an auction on its first ever one out of one card, a rookie ultimate moment featuring generational, you put this in here because you know I wouldn't be able to say it, Prospect Victor with Webin Yamama. The auction takes place in two stages, with the first stage being a blind bid in which top bidders will advance to the final stage, uh, which will be a traditional auction. No Dutch auctions, no reverse Dutch auctions, no flying Phoenix auctions here. Just a traditional put your number up in the sky and put a number down on the mat. Back to you in the studio. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and say that you might have uh, pronounced Victor Wembenyama Wemby's name better than you pronounce Monad's name Monad Labs I think is what Monada. you said Monad Labs that was uh, that was interesting I don't know pick a better name Bozos Okay, I always love uh, to hear Kix's pronunciation of various names. Uh, look, some updates from the Daily Bone newsletter. This is emailed to anyone that subscribes at dailybones.com. Three quick stories. Christie's kicks off auctions for four lots by OMB artist Tony Tafuro, including a completed Ordinal Maxi Biz set. So a little OMB action happening at Christie's will be very interesting to see what happens with that. Uh, Solana Perp Exchange Zeta Markets announces the Z token, that's ticker Z, which will power governance and protocol growth. Uh, last story, the developer for BTC Rune Mining Collection, RSIC, teases post-having utility, tweeting that he will not stop working on RSIC after the halving. RSICs continue to hold a 0.08 Bitcoin floor. Those are your stories from the Daily Bone podcast. Uh, we have been joined by NFT Nick since the start of the show. Choose Rich Nick, if you will. Nick, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing pretty well. I like kicks. Got a decent like amount too, of sleep. Man. What's that? You said I like kicks. I like you too. Uh, I That's not what I said, actually. Oh, I, comma, like kicks, like, comma. Mm, Got yeah. a lot of sleep. Gotcha. Cool. I semicolon. You. Like kicks. Oh, am I calling? Okay. Kicks was um, correct. And you got to work on those conspiracy theories. Uh, you don't like dead internet theory? Not a fan no, of flat earth. Fl the flat earth one was was a little bit like. Well, I mean that's easy. He's been trading on Solana for two years. You know, definitely had a head injury early youth, uh, <laughs> and that's okay. Uh, but yeah, no, you should look up the dead internet theory. I think you'd like that a little better. Um, well, I'm interested to check it out. Uh, I'm just also sitting here happy about how much uh, I got airdrop for that single tweet. Um, Crazy. Thinking about buying some jewelry or something, you know, changing my life. <laughs> yeah, that, that sounds like a good idea. In all seriousness, are you? so this is the Pac Moon airdrop, if I'm not mistaken. You put out one tweet about it, and uh, you had placed on the leaderboard quite high. Uh, I suppose, is this because of the number of impressions of that tweet, Nick? Yeah, just a single tweet. Dude, that's the type of boss baller that i am dude and i'm just getting you know 20 grand dropped on me like i deserve 2019 honda civic brand new brand new with that money so you got you got 20 bands for that dude uh yes i'm you not got gonna 20... ask in the middle of them anymore you know what i'm saying <laughs> um well, i spent you... it on another three minutes in the air with my private uh private pilot quick note i did notice on twitter I, I actually did wake up in the middle of the night at like four o'clock because I fell asleep with my clothes on fully in my bed, um, which is pretty stupid. Uh, that's just that's just poor. That that was poor behavior. Uh, I'm gonna be in New York City, man. You got some dirty ass shit all over your body. It, it was it was stupid. Bed. Well, fortunately, I'm washing uh, my comforter today, so we're yeah. Uh, your your maids can come into your pied at that and you know throw it in the dry cleaner. 
Exactly. So it, they're actually washed every day um, by by my right. by my staff. Um, but the uh, the what was I going to say? Um, when I woke up, I saw I looked on Twitter for a second, and I saw. Oh my God! What were we just talking about? We we're talking about Pac airdrop twenty grand, twenty bands. Pac Moon. A uh, dead Earth, dead Internet theory. No, it was twenty bands. Trails. The eclipse. Uh, eclipse. Totality. Oh, flying in the sky. I went on Delta. So basically, Delta charged for a flight where they filled out a whole uh, flight of things. If you were on first class, it was eighteen hundred dollars. For people that were asking, I got tweets being like, "Yo, the the private jet was off." Yo, you dummies, you turned the plane off when you parked the plane, and I'm yelling at the pilot to get back up in the air. That's the way that private aviation operates. Yeah, okay? They don't know anything about the world of private they, aviation. They don't understand. Here's the deal. The amount that we paid for that flight was basically the same as if we'd gotten first class on Delta with like a th 500 other people. Who, who had who were jammed next to each other in the back it was three people on each side like trying to get like a look out the window so they got completely fucked they were passing yeah, and, photos around to each other basically and here's the thing a plane you look out to the left to the right the sun's above you you can't even see it <laughs> like why would you pay for that dude on the ground you can see it better what are they like turning the plane 90 degrees yeah. vertical then only half the people can see it doesn't make sense to me well, I'll, I'll let you know, we saw it for uh, a large percentage of the duration of the uh, totality. We were in the moment of totality. It was better than actually going all the way to like Columbus or something like that, staying yeah. in a hotel, dealing with all this other shit just to go and stand on the ground with the peasants. And so like when you're higher in the sky, there's more of a totality range. It's more total. It's it, yeah. it was more, yeah. And if you follow along the path of totality, you can get a longer period of time. The record was set uh 20 years ago in a fighter jet, um, where they went along uh Africa, is where, where it was, and they basically set the world record for the longest duration of which a human eye had observed the pat the moment of totality. Uh, and it was something like 20 minutes, um, which is pretty crazy. All I was trying to get was like eight to 10. And I thought that was like incredibly reasonable. Apparently not. I mean, yeah, it was really uh, inappropriate, I'd say. But moving on to crypto price action, we're going to start with the Ethereum ETF. Our buddy that we met last week, the Van Eck CEO, Jan Van Eck, got a chance to chop it up Your with him. Buddy talked about me getting in fights in the street. Yeah, fake fights. Um, and he he just couldn't process my first name at, at all. It just it, We just moved on, just could not process it. Well, you're not rich enough. Yeah, that's that's probably it. But yeah, that's that's him right there. Um, he thinks the SEC will reject his firm's Ethereum ETF application. He said the way the legal process goes is the regulators will give you comments on your application, and that happened for weeks and weeks before the Bitcoin ETFs. Right now, pins are dropping as far as Ethereum is concerned. That's from Jan Van Eck. This is consistent with what James Safer thinks. This is what uh, it consistent with what Eric, I forget how to pronounce his last name, from uh, Bloomberg thinks. It's consistent with what everybody thinks. I actually jumped onto a Twitter space uh, last week that Fred Krueger was hosting, and I asked him if he still thought that the Ethereum ETF would get rejected. He said he does think so. Uh, he also said that he thinks that it's actually better for Ethereum that it get rejected. He thinks it doesn't make sense for it to get approved right now. That's his position. He's a Bitcoin hardcore maximalist, so take it with a grain of salt. Um, but if we see this application, basically, if we see the ETH ETF delayed, because I do think it's a foregone conclusion that it eventually is approved, but if it gets delayed, which, by the way, the Bitcoin ETF got delayed, if you remember, ladies and gentlemen, um, how does this impact the price action of Solana? Ethereum and Bitcoin. Uh, easy. I'd be curious to know what you're thinking about. You essentially uh, predicted the Bitcoin ETF price action accurately. You said it would be a sell the news event for a, a couple of weeks and then it would seven uh, to 14 days. Uh huh. And it would resume up only after, after that. Uh, I mean, yeah, the ETF, I think is just a totally different beast. I don't think we get it any even sign of approval till at least summer. Right now, I'm more interested in like short-term price action from CPI data. Seems like inflation's still running a little hot, and yet we don't have cuts potentially till later in the year. The other thing, though, is it is an election year, so a lot of people believe that we will see more printing, rate cuts sooner, 
a push to continue to get the current sitting president back in office, which you tend to see. And you need a, a hot economy to kind of do that as well to show that there's not any signs of a recession. We were running like insanely hot though on crypto, obviously Bitcoin holding over 70K and seeing ETH kind of trend yesterday. It seems like ETH has been the, the last leg in some of these things, like every time, like when ETH heats up, so far it seems like it's marked a short-term top over the last like three months. So I'm, I'm gonna continue to closely watch that and start to see if there is some level of a trend. Cause uh, yeah, even just yesterday we saw ETH up a nice little rally to 3,600, which was a lot of people were like, oh, ETH's finally waking up. And now we're right back below where we were. So all Real in all the market, like, yeah, dude, like who, who uses this shit? Ah, uh, you know what I mean? all right, why are we looking at an Ethereum chart? Ex uh, because base and blast brother, they use ETH. We're talking the about the Ethereum ETF. Uh, it does kind of make sense to me to show a chart of Ethereum. What asset did you want to see a chart of Nick? Filecoin. Like Solana, fucking okay. Bitcoin, AVAX, anything that's like. Oh, I forgot you dumped all your ETH bags. It, well, no, I pulled the Solana chart so we can see his network. I should have pulled right. it yesterday. Uh, I just didn't. Oh. I was too lazy. Oh. So. Look at Filecoin. Um, oh. Wow. Filecoin at $5, eh? Still better. <laughs> they said it wasn't a buy. It's, we're at eight twenty eight. Still looking like a genius. One year but, chart still looks pretty nice. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Nick, in all seriousness, um, do you have any thoughts on Bitcoin, excuse me, Ethereum ETF approval, uh, you know, whether if the ETF gets denied, which Jan Van Eck seems to think is going to get, uh, you know, the application is going to get delayed. I think that that's. I've been saying it was going to get denied. P.O. was say, saying confidently, despite all signals showing otherwise. I did not say that it was going to happen in May. May. That was what you said. That was what you said. Anyway, what do you make of Solana here, Nick, considering uh, the network, I'd call it issues that Solana has been having. That seems it's to be. Done, dude. I sold all my Solana at the 220. Oh, all of it. Okay. I got out. When did and... it hit 220? Yo, dude. Last cycle. cycle. Oh, Let's OTC deals. Nick check has. Check I got some deals. Okay. 220 was, was what the, the big whales were willing to pay for like serious bags. Like I got big bags. So they were uh, they were looking at that and they bought it for for, for me a for two twenty. I've just been sitting on it ever uh, sitting on uh, cash ever since, looking for a reentry opportunity. Um, you know, given the the challenges with Solana, I ended up rolling that all into an equity stake in Monad. Um, mm -hmm. And so I'm just a big uh, Monad holder, looking for their TGE event. You know, later this year. Um, and I'm probably going to be by that point, uh, really one of the uh, richest people mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. in the world. Well, there you go. You uh, strike me as a real alt L1 uh, maxi. So, so uh, quickly before we move on, we're going to move on to the CPI print and having pr predictions before talking about runes and base um, on the Ethereum ETF. I do think it's interesting that we have a Bitcoin ETF for only three and a half months at this point. If that, it actually might technically be less. But I think it's closer to three months. Uh, and, you know, it's been as bullish of a situation as we anybody could have predicted, right? Inflows are crazy. Um, you know, the GBTC situation didn't really impact anything. Um, people were trying to say that Bitcoin couldn't perform well in a high interest rate environment. Well, look at where we're at. Um, I do wonder what people think about the reality of an ETH ETF being in market at the same time of a Bitcoin as, as a Bitcoin ETF. And I wonder what it means if the Bitcoin ETF is allowed to sort of fly solo for another extended period of time. Um, people within crypto don't understand the differences between Bitcoin, Ethereum, and other coins. So I don't think it's fair to um, to assume that the boomer generation, if you will, the people that are buying the ETFs, would understand the differences. Kix, do you have any thoughts on this? On like you know these two ETFs being in market at the same time, and whether it would be good, bad, or, or neutral for the assets? And it's okay if you don't. We can move on to the CPI print, but I just love to know how you would think about something like this, or, or if Nick has something. Yeah, definitely not my area of expertise. I don't, I don't have big insights, but I think like you know, if if the ETF got it approved, it would it would take away somewhat from the inflows into BTC, but like they would, you know, like I don't think anyone is like I'm not going to put money into the Bitcoin ETF. I'm waiting for the ETH ETF, right? I think a lot of people are saying I want exposure to crypto in general. Some of those people may want Bitcoin only. Um, but, uh, it, so it, it may temporarily take a little bit of the flows away from Bitcoin, 
um, you know, people, I, I could, I see, I could see a decent amount of people being like, I want some ETH and I want some Bitcoin. Uh, that wouldn't be too crazy for me to, to see. I that. feel like that's a good way to think about it. Like, it, and no one's like, I'm not going to touch that Bitcoin. Like, you know, no yeah. one that has like a, a Charles Schwab account is like, I'm not touching that Bitcoin. Hold out for the ETH ETF. Let's, yeah, let's get cooking on that that ETH one. Uh, Nick, what's going on, amigo? You got uh, Solana's chart pulled up on screen, a little visual. It's a, it's it's a little visual. Uh, it's a big visual. Uh, I mean, look at how clear that resistance was on Solana, 201, 202, whatever. Um, kind of crazy that it was like that week after week after week. Um, just a hard rejection on the on the fourth try. I think we, you know, what's crazy is the next level down, any significant level is all the way down at 112. But I like uh, zoom I like out, Nick. 144. That's where we're going. What am I zooming out with? Zoom out. Go farther back. It's your yeah. chart. Look right there. Is where we're looking, like 144 area, a little lower. A little lower. That makes sense to me. Right. It looks like a right pretty similar there. setup to end of 2023 into 2024. That's where I'm looking. Easy relonged it at 100. Got a nice 2x. Easy's levels to me are always a bunch of nonsense. I don't fully. <laughs> uh, I, don't, I don't fully agree. So I'm gonna I'm gonna zoom back in and let Easy know where this bad boy is going. I'll buy uh, at 140. You'll yell that you wish you did, and then you'll complain about it. I can't wait. At 300. No, I th I th I think we could see a little bit like that right around. What? Where's that go? Wait wait wait. <laughs> wait, wait. Where's that little dip going, Nick? <laughs> Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have a chart of Solana pulled up. Nick uh, quickly uh, rejected Easy's level, but then promptly drew a line exactly at Easy's level About right after. That's why people are higher. Yeah, it, Nick said shit on Easy's 144 call. Nick's calling 146.14 instead. And, yeah. and ladies, ladies and gentlemen, in business meetings, things like this happen all the time where someone will actually propose an idea. Someone like myself might say, hey, what don't we, why don't we do that? And then Nick says, no, we shouldn't do that. 30 seconds later, he proposes that we do that. He has so, got an he, issue, though, with, with his name. <laughs> with, That's one of the problems, though. Dude, people just don't understand it, so it's difficult to understand. Um, uh, 60,000 looking nice for Bitcoin here. 60,000. I'll buy everything's it. probably pulling back into the CPI. You know, inflation getting a little hot, selling may go away, tax season, summer, we, summertime we, boys. We we need a we need a little bit of a pullback here. We need a, things to cool off a little bit. So well, I mean when you zoom out on this chart, it is pretty damn aggressive. Like a lot of green candles on this chart. I mean, I, I wow. You know, I don't look at charts, so I, it was interesting for me to see it. Well, if you want to see the monthly. Um, we have <laughs> that is uh, a volatile one, last two, month for three, a boomer. Four, five, six, seven straight months of going from uh, twenty five thousand <laughs> up to seventy thousand. It's completely outside the bands, dude. I, I mean, love it. Outside the bones. I love so it. We saw it uh, this time or last time go from sixty thousand, basically as low as a fifty percent pullback. So, uh. I don't know that we'll get that extreme this time, but like, I would not be surprised. I mean, let send it to 45, dude. Let's, let's pick up some at 45. I'll add another Bitcoin. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna wait for it to hit 45 easy. Okay. Absolutely love to hear that. You're Nick. miss the entry. Like <laughs> what's, what's your target? Right around 61. Just again, making up bullshit numbers, dude. This guy, <laughs> I mean, this guy, both of you are, to be clear, both of you are making up bullshit numbers. But dude, mine, mine, no, we're not. I mean, I've been spot I'm on. Right there. Look, look, at, look at Easy's right number there. right at right at the previous high. Easy's looking at this, which does look like a nice line. I mean, <laughs> I mean, you shit at me every time until you look and you're like, oh, wait, actually, this right might there. be pretty good. Like the idea better when he hears it coming out of his mouth. <laughs> Well, that's for sure. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we will move on from this section of Nick declining Easy's uh, calls on charting and then promptly drawing the lines on his own chart and saying, actually, that looks pretty good. Um, look, we will see. We will see what happens with the price action on the majors, Bitcoin, Ethereum and Solana. Um, I would not be surprised if we see some volatility. I think it's only appropriate that three months into the Bitcoin ETF being live and the boomers buying into it, we give them some aggressive, aggressive volatility that makes their stomach turn. Um, look, we're going to move on to the having prediction. So the quote from former CEO of BitMEX, Arthur Hayes, if you want to listen to some good podcasts, just search for Arthur Hayes' name in your podcast app and just run through the, the past few. The guy really knows what he's uh, talking about when it comes to Bitcoin and crypto in general. He said, when most market participants agree on a certain outcome, 
the opposite usually occurs. This is on the having. Um, I feel like somebody needed to write an article, and, and this is the article that they wrote. It's literally a fact that nothing happens after the having every single time, and it takes six to nine months for anything to happen. But I love how every single time they write an article like, everybody's bullish on the having, and that means that nothing's going to happen. There is something is happening, though, this time. What? The runes drop. I think okay. it's going to shock a lot of people. It's going to lead to higher fees through the mempool because of the constant volume that's happening. You have more total users signing up for Bitcoin nodes right now, which is crazy for just, quote, the decentralization aspect. And ultimately what that's going to lead to is higher fees for miner despite the, the break in block. So I think that's actually like a very bullish case because with that number of fees, it's actually going to continue to incentivize miners here with just the total number of volume that's going through on it. And I think with that support of these of the runes nodes that are going live, the amount of volume, the mempool increase, all of that's bullish for price action because in order to participate, you got to pay to play. Can, okay. Can you, and, Matt, and, sorry, Peter, real quick. Can you explain the, the fees going up post having because of uh, runes easy just for people that might not understand, including myself. I have like a basic understanding of it, but... Yeah. And, and ladies and gentlemen, we're going to have Trevor Owens, the founder of Pizza Ninjas and uh, an, an investor in our business and just a buddy of ours on the show for 15 minutes on Monday to discuss runes in like in depth. So that's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to do 15 minutes with him. But easy. Uh, go ahead and serve us up. And what a level of interest Nick has for runes. I mean, this guy. Look, dude, I, I, it has nothing to do with runes. It I has just, to do I'm with not, sleeping saying, fully clothed. Sorry that I yawned. My apologies to you. Maybe you can deal with it. All right. We got Jan Van Eck over there. All right, easy. Please go ahead. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, the runes fees thing is going to be ramping just because, like, runes are going to be one etched, which I hate the fucking word. I hate etching instead of inspiring. I love it. I love the, the ordinal. I, you know, I, I've been uh, all about the ordinals people for a while. I had a moment the other day where I was like, look, the ordinals people are straight up psychopaths, and that's the most bullish thing I've ever seen in my life. These people are hilarious. I love them, uh, including the people that we know that are doing Like, God bounce. My guy got bounce. I just love how he's just like, nah, man, ordinals for life. But anyway, easy, please. So I think the main thing too with it is like, you got to think runes are going to be inscribed etching and the number of people etching that uh, are doing it simultaneously leads to higher fees. And on top of that, all these people are setting up nodes to try to front run other people, which is all a game of the mempool. Like that's the main thing. It's like all these people are diving in with fees to front run to try to get the first runes because they're numbered. And because they're numbered, people think they're going to have provenance much like ordinals. Like, that's the big thing that a lot of people are going to be paying high fees to try to get the earlier numbers of the right ones. And I think that's where we're going to continue to see fees run because of the number of inscriptions or etches that are going to be happening with runes. Secondary markets of people trying to buy them constantly. I think we see all-time high volume on these things. I think marketplace fees go insane. And then, of course, all these people setting up these stupid nodes, which I think is a terrible decision. You're going to see so many dumbasses brick their computers trying to learn the command line in hopes of front-running or just blow Bitcoin, literally blow it up because they have no idea what the hell they're doing. Like, I, I'm, I went what on the a hell does morning. blow up Bitcoin mean? They're going to press the wrong button and send it into the void and wonder why the hell they got nothing back. Like, uh, blow up their own Bitcoin. Not like, yeah, blow up their own Bitcoin. I was like, like some, some asshole in, uh, in Columbus, Ohio is not going to be able to blow up Bitcoin with his like Dell computer. But anyway, okay. Yeah, it's just the volume. It's pure number of transactions that's going to lead to higher fees. And then people Basically, trying to like, run run. If I am understanding this correctly, like we basically have like Shopify, which is like Solana or base, where it's like super easy to launch a website similar to super easy to launch a meme coin and trade it. And instead, we're going to go over to Bitcoin and we're all going to start learning how to code in PHP and launching and hosting our own servers, a.k.a. running our own nodes to inscribe rooms. So it's basically what we're doing, right? I think, yeah. I mean, it's good. So it's going to be like a nerd. It's going to be like a like a like a nerdy person's meme coin market. So I think um, someone that actually knows what they're talking about from the development side on Bitcoin would be beyond offended by that analogy. But we'll we'll run with it uh, for sure. Kicks um, look on the Bitcoin side. The Bitcoin miners have flat out not moved. Micro strategy on the other end, the leveraged bet on Bitcoin, if you will. Michael Saylor's organization has been a robust cook uh, outperforming Bitcoin. If Bitcoin goes up four percent, micro strategy goes up close to twenty five percent. It's been crazy. Uh, Coinbase has performed quite well. A lot of people 
people are saying, don't buy Bitcoin miners. They suck. Um, some, you know, defenders of the Bitcoin mining stocks, Mike Alfred, are like, nope, the, the you know, uh, you're going to see a shift to the miners. The miners are going to start to outperform MicroStrategy. Uh, you know, if you want to pull up like ma Marathon Mining or something, Clemente, let's look at that stock price or, or Riot, you know, something like that. Yeah. So look at this six month. I'd actually quickly like to have Nick like this is not what you want to see, Nick. Am I right? In terms of price action, I'm sure you'll you'll mock the question. But uh, the the performance of the miners compared to like MicroStrategy, Bitcoin itself or um, Coinbase has just been underwhelming. And, you know, some people are calling for, no, you're going to see a rotation of the miners. You're going to see a rotation of the miners, especially post having, especially post having. But then you got guys like Dan Held and Fred Krueger saying never buy a mining stock ever. They suck. Um, so it's, it's hard to see. I mean, we'll have to see if ordinals and runes makes Fred Kruger and Dan Held look like they're wrong and look make Mike Alfred look like a genius. But um, yeah, it hasn't been the best experience ever holding mining stocks for the past six months. I don't know if you have anything to add on uh, this price action that you're seeing on screen, Nick, or if we should just move on to base. I mean, I like looking at the financials, Phil. And when I'm looking at the uh, financial statements here, you know, I like analyzing. There's just a couple of key things. We're looking at the uh, overall income statement and the balance statement. Those are most interesting to me. Um, in the case of Marathon Mining, holy shnikes. I mean, these guys have got uh, a lot of assets on the books here. Now, I don't know how much of that is actual computing assets. Um, well, they have I real mean, world assets like land and, you know, uh, physical well, servers. Yeah. So, so, so that's what I was talking about with computing assets. But uh, um, it, there's also, yes, real estate as well. Um, but they've built up an entire uh, sort of server farm. Um, I think there's also value in those server farms, even if there's not value in mining um, at some future point where the like th there could I, I don't know, there could be some world where it's not profitable for a, a period in time, in which case they need to just switch over to becoming um, a regular server farm, which is pretty much a commodity. Uh, their their financials don't look too bad um, on three hundred eighty seven million in revenue. Their net income is two hundred sixty one million. Uh, it, it, the the problem is the the distinction between it is there's an inherent cost to their acquisition of Bitcoin versus like someone can just buy cash and, and have Bitcoin. So there's spot, no, yeah. yeah, like so uh, they're working for theirs. They do produce it. It's a great business. I think it's a phenomenal business. It's different for somebody that uh, is able to yield cash at a cheaper rate. Um, and so that's all that you're comparing in those two things. Like, does MicroStrategy's uh, cash from their software business come at a cheaper uh, uh, capital, what, what do you call it? Cost, cost of capital, basically. And my guess is, yes, they've set up like a proper business, like a software business versus a hardware business. Um, and and uh, in the world of Bitcoin, everyone's competing against each other. So like, and there's like more and more servers always added online. So at some point, these businesses are unprofitable. Um, if you look at like 2022 for this company, um, this end, company um, being Marathon Mining, yeah, Marathon, their net income was negative 700 million on revenue of 100 million, meaning they just kept them running. And now their assets are huge because the price of Bitcoin went up. So they just kept running it through uh, that period of time, which was smart for them. But it's just like volatile, um, uh, volatile uh, for shareholders action. Yeah. And and people end up looking at it just on the cost basis. I don't know. I mean, I like uh, I don't think it's bad as a uh, business. I mean, the stock performance, you know, micro strategy has done uh, phenomenally well. Um, I, I don't know which so, one. So, Nick, and what like one word answer is, is this bullish or bearish for my Pepe BRC 20s on Bitcoin? <laughs> uh, bullish. I was going to say, ignore that question quickly before we move on to base. Easy. Would you buy Coinbase, MicroStrategy, or mining stock today? Coinbase. All right. Figured you'd say that. Yeah, anyway, uh, yeah, no, I mean, look, hey, it's a good a good answer. Did not see MicroStrategy's pump coming. Uh, moving on to base, base TVL is 3X since March to $1.5 billion. Well, Still, Pio, just to find, cap that, though, look at the financials of Coinbase versus MicroStrategy. Like, on a business basis, it, it's actually, Coinbase is, like, far superior. 
Um, micro strategy potential significantly outweighs as well, in my opinion, especially when you have micro strategies selling stock for basically debt to rebuy more Bitcoin. Like there's a lot of like interest, interesting mechanics behind it, where I think the fee structure that Coinbase can make and the potential off of like perpetuals and other things that they can launch, especially offshore. Could, I think Coinbase could get to a thousand dollars. Coinbase absolutely fucks. You're not going to get any pushback from me on Coinbase. Absolutely fucks. Like, that's, holy that's, shit. So when you rank stocks, where does that fall? Is absolutely fucks like... Uh, it's like, up there. It's like NVIDIA, Tesla, kind of fuck. Coinbase, fuck. Easy. Do you know what NVIDIA's market cap is right now today? Uh, a trillion? Over a trillion. I love that you guys said that. It's literally over $2 trillion. Yeah. That thing, that thing has gone on a Bitcoin. Actually, it's outperformed it's Bitcoin. It's going higher. Like, I'm telling I know you, it's, it's going, going much higher, higher. But it will not be able to outperform Bitcoin continuously because it's outperformed Bitcoin over like the past eight years. It's nuts. Look at the five year on that, Clement. Look at the max on that. Right. The, this Have guy seen- Jensen has been literally plowing the entire, uh, you know, microchip industry uh, for for twenty years. I mean, he's just plowing everybody, and um, it's 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 a one of a kind stock. When you look at its twenty plus year performance, the guy Jensen absolutely fucks. Uh, I don't even know what to say. I'm plowing everyone. I, I can't buy he's it here. Plowing it's- an industry, absolutely fucking. Any other analysis, Pio, that you can help us with? Like, Am I wrong it, about anything that I said? I think Ram, if Ram was here, he would agree with everything that I said. He wouldn't say it the same way, about, but he about, would agree. About, about can't outperform Bitcoin may not be 100% accurate. Ram's an interesting character when it comes to discussion of Bitcoin. Uh, so we're going to have him on the show next week. So we'll we'll dig into that. Um it's outperformed Bitcoin over the past eight years, which is completely insane. And the fact that it's over two trillion market cap as a pro- as a company is is fucking nuts. And so I'm I, like, what I'm pointing out is, do I think it can go to four trillion? Absolutely. But I feel like as every day that goes by makes it unlikely that it'll continue to outperform Bitcoin. I'm not saying it's a it's a bad buy. It's Nvidia. It's like the god tier company at this point. Jensen's just been doing his thing for 20 plus years. I showed you that clip from 20 years ago, Nick, the other day. It's like my favorite clip ever of Jensen talking about his mentality and building a business. It's awesome. Uh, I bookmarked it right away. I'm gonna watch it every day and, and pray to it. But anyway, um, yeah, I mean, Your like margins are insane. Insane. For, yeah. It's the best company. So, uh, but Coinbase, uh, I think Wall Street is completely out to lunch and asleep at the wheel with Coinbase because they still don't get Bitcoin at all. They they really still don't. If, they don't. They, they will, but they don't. Um, they do understand that like NVIDIA equals AI equals good. Equals like this thing just went to $2 trillion. Holy shit. Like there's an understanding of NVIDIA at this point for sure. And there's like an un- understanding of AI. Coinbase, what's Coinbase's market cap? Can we get that quickly, Clemente? Uh, I actually don't even know off the top of my head. And MicroStrategy's uh, market cap, please. Both of those. Coinbase. Um, yeah. Coinbase is uh, $58 billion. Okay. Cheap. Cheap. I, ladies and gentlemen, I just left a moment of silence there intentionally. $58 billion? There's yeah. fucking meme coins that have higher market caps than this thing. I you mean, just, what- just wait till they figure out that Coinbase has its own blockchain. Dude. <laughs> They're never going to figure that out. <laughs> They're literally never going to figure what that out. What the hell do you mean by that, Kix? 24B for micro strategy. This is what I'm talking about. When we went to dinner with Ram, he was talking about small cap stocks. These aren't small cap, but regardless, um, I mean, at the end of the day, well, I, the mining is different. Nick was making really great points about the mining stuff compared to like Coinbase. Dude, Shiba Inu coin went higher in market cap than Coinbase did last cycle. That's what I'm pointing out. NVIDIA is at over $2 trillion. It's up 100% year to date. Holy shit. Jensen over there building a god tier company. Crazy. Um, I'm just pointing out that I, I feel like it's more likely for Coinbase to outperform NVIDIA over the next five years. There you go. Mike DeFi rocking an OMB said Coinbase, Coinbase, Mike 20 X, no joke. Basically, in my opinion, the best equities over the next 10 to 20 to 30 years have to be, have to be Bitcoin equities. They have to be. How could they not? Um, Yeah. Anyway, what what do we think? It's going to 20 X from two plus trillion dollar market cap when it just a bajillion X over, you know, 20 years. So you're a, you're a base maxi. I'm not a base maxi. I'm just I'm a low-key base maxi. You own, you own some friend pet token? Yeah, uh, I don't pet own pet. friend pet. I'm big on Sofamon. That's my that's my base play. 
My bags are up like two and a half X. Basically, fancy Telegram stickers. Friend pet Giga sent, though, on the Ansem tweet yesterday of uh, someone tracking him and buying 33 ETH worth of Friend pet. Giga sent, 34% candle. Love to see it. One of the first Tamagotchi like games on base. I think base in general, dude, is just going to keep on chain game too, man. I mean, dude, Everyone look at base NFTs. About these Tamagotchi games. It's hilarious. It's like no first one. First one in, first one out, Nick. That's all no, you got to do. Fifo, Fifo it's, baby. It's, it's like finding gold in a fire. You want to be the first one in and the first one out. Just grab it quick and get the hell out of there. Finding gold in a fire. What a, what a horrendous situation. <laughs> that is a good analogy for what people are literally doing. And people are acting like that's the only way to function in this market. In this Finding space. gold like, in a fire, baby. Get the hell in. Grab as much as you can and don't be the last one out the door. People <laughs> are running into burning buildings rather than just building a house for themselves. No, don't um, do that. Don't do that. That's a crazy idea. Uh, Nick, uh, What? so like when it comes to base, well, first of all, uh, odds of a base coin, I actually think this is one of the mo more fascinating things to discuss. Coinbase would put, like, could there be a coin? Like, I, I don't think there will be. I don't ever. either. I don't think, I think they'll use native ETH and continue to streamline that process. I also think they'll make it so seamless to use the Coinbase app where they're going to streamline basically using any crypto on the app to get into base. Like, that's how I look at it. Right. It does not make sense for them to launch a base token. And maybe I'm completely it's wrong. It's like illegal, that. right? I mean, like, I don't think it's illegal, but it's like just buy Coinbase shares. Like, yeah, kind of like crazy. publicly traded company putting out a coin and then you have to choose between the coin and the stock. OpenAI has WorldCoin. Right. But OpenAI is not publicly traded. Uh, they're owned by Microsoft. But those are two separate companies. Let's be clear. Uh, yeah. I don't even know what uh, we went from blast to open AI. I don't, you haven't talked about blast at all. Just it, base. Nick, base. It, it, base, it, was, base chief. it wasn't L2, that much. It wasn't that big of a jump. It wasn't all of a sudden, like, let's talk about Sam Altman's, you know, the way that he's been operating as open AI CEO. Like, no, I'm just, yeah, it, I'd, I'd say it's non, it's a non zero chance that they launch a coin, but it would not be, it would not be any time in the next six months. That would be like a long term horizon thing. If, if the, the next five years, Nick, Nick got bored like three and a half minutes ago, and he's just like, yeah, I'm kind of I'm kind of out, chief is basically where Nick's at right now. He's like, yeah, I'm good. I'm well, I'll, I'll jump into the next one. <laughs> Look alive, Nick. Someone in the audience. But I mean, I do think that, you know, if if we're going into like, sell in, come on, don't I leave. do think if we're going into sell in May and, and go away. <laughs> You know, and and we have some chop or negative activity on the majors. It does set us up for like on chain PVP season, uh, which should be very interesting. So I think you'd see a lot of action on Solana, Blast, Base, Ordinals as a result. But it would be very much like PVP on chain existing participants. Um, and then, and then when the majors make the next leg up, that's when we would just have those big net inflows. Funny money, everything starts pumping kind of season. Nick? I'm bullish on base. <laughs> I, that's my uh, that's my summary here. Base PVP NFTs, summer, Nick. man. PvP summer. Get ready for the narratives to drop. People are really gonna start concentrating their bags, pumping, pumping around a few things. I, I think uh friend tech, I'm very interested, especially my keys and all the ones that people have been buying. Very smart buy from everybody. how many points you got? I don't have a ton. I got like six hundred, but I made yeah, it I the same amount. In, so. Like so, someone randomly bought my key the other day. I just think it's funny. Like that mine somebody... keeps selling, and I think these people are making just genius financial decisions. Because uh, let me tell you, I took a picture um, of uh, myself the other day and posted it on there. You don't get that <laughs> anywhere else, dude. Uh, yeah, dude. friend tech man uh, heating up a little bit. Um, maybe I'll have to buy a cheese rich share. Well, those are some hot shares. That's for sure. Well, look, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to be joined by Henry, the CEO of Peanut Games in just a moment. Very excited to have another kick-ass gaming partner and one that, uh, you know, plays into the Blast discussion. So that's really nice. Really like that. Uh, Nick, you know, I didn't mean to, um, to you know, make you feel lousy about getting bored during the conversation. Was there any topic of conversation that uh, we missed? You got anything else you want to be a jerk about on the show? <laughs> 
Go your ahead. hair looks good today. Theo's jerk segment where he <laughs> talks about why nobody else other than him understands Bitcoin and then shits on the other people that are uh, on the show. Go ahead. No, Let's we weren't. We were talking about Blast. We weren't talking about. Oh, Bitcoin. we were talking about. Blast. I, you guys think Base or Blast will win over the next year? Over the next year, just those two. Like uh, which one? Ooh, which one win is like ooh, a winner after ooh. a year? Uh, I have a question for Nick. Do you think that uh, your Pac Man? Is like you know uh, if that he's gonna really do it? He's gonna do it like like Brian Armstrong did it with with Blur. It's gonna be that level. Do you think that? Sorry, what? I was, <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, in just a minute, and I, I see a Slack message from Nick coming in right as I asked that question. Nick give hey, look, you're not gonna get. I'm not gonna get mad. I love seeing Nick be hands on with the operations of the business, sending Slack messages while he's being asked questions on the show. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, we have a very special guest today, the partner for today's show, the CEO Henry of Peanut Games. Peanut Games is a casual blast farming game. Uh, people play the game to earn points. Uh, points can be used to open boxes, which which give you a nut. If you buy the nut, it earns a token and blast points, will, which will lead into your allocation ahead of their token launch. So, ladies and gentlemen, we have Henry on the show. Henry, how's it going, buddy? What's up, guys? Yeah, lovely show. Thank you guys for having me. I just realized there's like a lot of glare. I'm in like a, this hotel room in the conferences. So I'm going to take off my glasses because there's like a ton of glare in this. <laughs> No worries at all. We've been there, and I appreciate you calling the show lovely uh, when it was, it's been laced with profanity. But anyway, for people that are unaware, can you give a 60-second rundown of what Peanut Games is and how the game works? Absolutely. So to make it very simple, we are an all-in-one, one-stop shop for all your favorite casual games on one website. So people can jump in just connect to play and on the dashboard you'll see plenty of new games right now we have three live games but the other two are not merged onto blast yet it will be done this this month and we aim for one new game a month i know that sounds crazy but we're doing really simple casual games and they'll be playable on all devices not just focused on the app stores but we'll also have it released onto telegram uh, but most importantly, we focus on on-chain gaming. So this will be very playable on your desktop, laptops, your phones, just through your Chrome browsers and whatnot. So that's a quick rundown of what we do. We make games and your on-chain gaming. Absolutely. And, and, you know, I've kind of been pointing out that I think that, you know, the video game sector of crypto is going to be what ultimately makes NFTs uh, owned by a lot of people again uh, for good reason, right? Because like if you're enjoying a game and you have an NFT that you win in game or you buy for something in game, it makes a lot of sense. It gives you a reason to hold the thing. Um, you guys have other collections. You have Genesis Bubble Bots. Is there any benefit to owning those other NFTs in this ecosystem? Yes. So the first NFT was uh for the builders we made that it was a complete free mint we made that like after the luna crash just to kind of gather people back in uh because a lot of people were very burned out uh at that point now what that currently does is it gives extra points right for people coming in to want to earn points when we get head start uh, we're gonna have that integrated into our dashboard very soon uh, but again that was a free mint the bubble bots actually plays a much bigger role if you buy and I mean, you what what it was is that it was an airdrop, the bubble bots, right? If you minted our because we were partners with IMX before, and if you minted the battle pass before, you were airdrop the bubble bots. Uh, but now that we are changed chains, the bubble bots play as in like a five percent of total supply of an airdrop of our pie chart. So you get that on top of that, you get unlimited gems in the games, uh, and it also accrues you points. So there's a lot of utility for holding a ball bots, um, but I think there's a lot of people very happy about just the big pie chart of the airdrop for holding a ball bot. Uh, not a lot of people know it, uh, but we've just started announcing the public knowledges of it. So there, the farms will basically it is part of a, another percentage where if you do get a peanut and you mint a farm, I mean, you can get one for as cheap as $26 right now. And it's free gas on blast so that gets you d nuts which is an iou token which you can claim for 
the actual nuts token uh, upon the launch, which TG would be this quarter of Q2. Got it. And, and people are wondering why Blast, because obviously there's Solana, there's other uh, L2s, and you guys have been working on this game for a while. I'd be very curious, what what did, uh, you know, kind of, you know, uh, inspire you guys to move forward with Blast? Well, the, the long-term vision has always been multi-chain for us. Uh, why Blast now? It's a very good question. I mean, in terms of incentives, I mean, look, Web3 is all about incentives, right? And they're, they have done just an amazing job with aligning incentives, not just with developers such as us, but with the community. Like there's huge incentives, huge in opportunities. On top of that, it's such an easy chain to build on. Like it's just very seamless for us to merge the games in. It's fast. Op transactions are very easy as well. So that's like the simple answer I can happy to dig in if you like no i mean look love to hear it um we talk about blast we talk about blur on this show a lot we also talk about Solana and other l2s uh blast is without question in my opinion one of the most interesting obviously you're you're in pac-man's ecosystem at that point um and he is uh in my opinion a good horse to bet on so very interesting to hear you know why uh, you ended up moving forward there so if someone plays this game they get points. They end up buying NFTs that accrue points. Does that give them an allocation to a future token that you guys are launching? Yes, absolutely. Not just that. They also get like allocation to Blast, right? Because it's so uh, you're getting double airdrop. <laughs> I think that's like a huge appeal for a lot of developers as well, right? And it's that's what I mean. It's a double incentive for the users and the developers. So if they've actually built something really incredible. I don't think this has ever been done before. So, but yeah, to answer your question short, yes. Well, people like to, <laughs> that's the answer everyone was looking for. I think if you said no, uh, people would be very, very <laughs> upset. Um, it's just like, kinda, no guys, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, uh, that's, yeah, that's definitely so, how Henry, I do have a quick question about the game itself. I know that it is currently desktop and br browser based only, correct? Limitation correct. wise, PC, Mac, or does it available on both? It's available on both. Yeah. Awesome. For people wanting the mobile version, like on the Chrome browser or browser base, it'll be done in a month. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. We're changing that was the intro. next question was yeah. mobile. Cause obviously we're seeing a shift to a lot more mobile experiences. The other thing is I know that blast gold was distributed and we just talked briefly about farming, et cetera. Are you anticipating any potential blast gold for users of the platform? Yes, we will be anticipating the more look, the more it's all about the interaction transactions on our end, right? Because look, we are look just to be transparent. We are late to the game, but that's in a way advantage for us because we've seen what other projects have failed and made mistakes on. So we're avoiding those. Um, but yeah, there's the first distribution for Blasco has been done, but doesn't mean that it's over. It's still pretty early. Like there's a lot more to come. And right now we've just started. And we're racking in those points right now as we speak. So there will be for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I th look, I think that's a great point. I don't think that anyone that's building a quality product in this space or any space for that matter should feel like they're late to something because ultimately in a bleeding edge technology space like this, there's so many failures and so many people kind of like, you know, uh, run out of money early or they go out of business for different reasons just being able to play another game is is a huge huge w when you're operating in the space being able to outlast um you know the competition and outlast other people building is huge so look if, if, if somebody is listening to this henry and wants to get involved with peanut games what is the most direct way for them to do that uh, easiest way is play the game for free <laughs> Just jump on to peanutgames.com slash dashboard or just peanutgames.com and jump in. You, If you guys, I mean, we're audited. We have our audit audited documentation public on our website. Just go to the documentation. You can see our audit. I mean, it's safe, but I always say, you know what? It doesn't hurt to get a burner wallet. Just open a burner wallet, log in, play. It's free, and that's the best way. Yeah. Hell yeah. And so uh, anything else people should know about the game or about the next, you know, call it 30 to 60 days for the organization? Well, the uh, I can kind of I guess I would just drop some leaks here <laughs> on, on the next. No. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, shit. And damn. There we go. Uh, OK, let's rock, Henry. So I all right. The team's going to kill me for this. <laughs> all right. So so. 
So uh, we got a uh, Space Invaders type of game coming. Uh, I'm not going to say exactly how the mechanics work yet, but it'll be fun. On top of that, there will be a Flappy Bird type of game. It's not going to be the exact same type of mechanics, but that's coming out this month. And there is one other thing that's coming this month. Something related to Solana, since you guys were talking about what? Solana. What? So, yeah. <laughs> So it's it still works in our ecosystem with Blast, but people will be like, oh, how? But it's there, there's there's a way. <laughs> so that's coming this month. That's supposed to be a surprise, but just gonna leak it out there. Whoever's listening to this, this is Alpha for all you guys listening. Yeah. Good stuff, man. Well, uh, where can people where should people follow you? Obviously, on Twitter, we have the Peanut Games account. That's at go peanut games. So just geo peanut games. Uh, where else should people go? Uh, you can jump on my personal Twitter if you, if people want to reach out. I mean, I've have my DMs open. Uh, so H E N R A E E, the double E. Yeah, and you guys can find me there. Um, H E N R A E E. Yeah, cool. Awesome. Well, real pleasure having you on the show today. Excited about Peanut Games. Obviously, you guys have uh, high quality backers. Um, and good to know that if somebody plays the game, gets points, ends up buying the NFTs that accrue points, it gives them an allocation of the future token that you all are launching. Launching, Obviously, people uh, are always trying to speculate in this market. Um, real pleasure having you on the show. Excited about the partnership with Peanut Games. And, and thanks again for joining. Thanks for hosting. Thank you, guys. Likewise. Our pleasure. Make sure you follow Go Peanut Games, ladies and gentlemen, on Twitter. Nick, I saw you gearing up a little, a little movement there. What, what, what are we looking at here? That was just excitement. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen that is today's episode of the daily bone podcast we do this monday through friday 9 a.m eastern time each and every week it's available on apple and spotify podcasts youtube x platform video twitter space is really wherever you get your content we hope you enjoyed the show shout out to kicks for joining shout out to henry from peanut games for joining make sure you check it out at go peanut games on twitter love having some quality game partners on a consistent basis these days gaming is for sure the future of Web3. We'll be back tomorrow. We appreciate everybody joining us today.